Hey there, legends. It's Nox again, and today I've got something special lined up for you in the world of Bloodstrike Mobile. Ever found yourself in the middle of an intense firefight, desperately wishing you had eyes in the back of your head? Well, you're not alone. I've been there too. That's why in today's video, we're diving deep into the art of awareness, a game changer in every Bloodstrike Mobile battle. Picture this. You're navigating the intense landscapes, heart pounding, enemies lurking around every corner. That split-second decision can be the difference between victory and defeat. So, grab a seat because I'm about to guide you through mastering situational awareness. We'll explore scenarios, tactics, and strategies to elevate your gameplay. Stay tuned as I unravel the secrets to staying one step ahead, making those split-second decisions count, and ultimately dominating the battlefield. It's time to level up your gameplay, so hit that subscribe button, buckle up, and let's dive into the world of max awareness in Bloodstrike Mobile. There are various methods to enhance your awareness, but today, let's narrow it down to the top three. Visual scanning, sound awareness, and map familiarity. First up, let's talk visual scanning. This is your secret weapon. Actively observe your surroundings, check windows, rooftops, and corners. This helps you stay on your toes, ready to react to any unexpected enemy movements. Now let's talk about sound. It's more than just background noise, it's a game changer. Pay close attention to footsteps, zipline usage, gunfire, explosions. These audio cues are your allies. Invest in quality headphones for that immersive experience. It's like having a radar for enemy locations, giving you a tactical advantage. See this? I didn't even spot this guy coming, but my headset is the real MVP here. Those sound cues it picks up. Game changer. Footsteps, gunfire, you name it. It's like having a secret radar. Investing in a good headset? Totally worth it. It's the reason I can react so quickly to surprises in the game. Your gear matters, folks. Lastly, map familiarity. The backbone of strategic gameplay. Know the ins and outs, key landmarks, and popular spots. Whether it's choosing the right landing zone or planning your next move, understanding the map is your key to staying one step ahead. So guys, I mostly die this way. Close range battles, I'm confident, awareness on point. But snipers and surprise attacks? Yeah, they catch me. No worries. I've got a movement guide dropping soon, refining those moves to dodge snipers and sneaky attacks. First video in 2024, stay tuned. I know I split awareness into three main zones, but I'll briefly cover the rest such as mini-map utilization, weapon and ammo management, communication, striker skills, circle adaptation, and risk versus reward. Starting with mini-map utilization, regularly monitoring the map for teammate and enemy indicators is crucial for game awareness. Pay attention to footsteps and gunshot markers to anticipate movements. Additionally, using UAV scan enhances real-time info for informed decisions during gameplay. In this example, I spotted two enemies and after knocking the first one I lost sight of the second. With over 4k cash, I swiftly bought a UAV scan. Boom. There he was in the tunnel. My prior awareness led me to suspect his presence in the tunnel, and the UAV confirmed it. Now armed with that info, I'm ready to launch my attack. Thanks to the UAV scan, securing the kill was a breeze for me. Next up we have weapon and ammo management, under weapon management. It's not just about carrying any gun, it's understanding the right combinations. You can't go with two short range guns or two assault rifles. Instead, pair long range assault rifles with SMGs or shotguns, while snipers complement mid slash close range assault rifles like AK-47 and SCAR, or well modified SMGs from your loadout. I'll delve deeper in a dedicated video, but for now, this brief explanation sets the foundation. Ammo management is straightforward. Keep an eye on your ammo count and know when to switch guns or reload. Being honest here, I made a big mistake in this situation. After knocking the first guy down, I used the same gun on the second one. When the ammo ran out, I wanted to reload, but seeing him reload too, I seized the moment to switch weapons and secure the knockdown. Quick thinking saved the day. Also, always note the closest buy stations for easy navigation in the area to get your ammo. 
Skipping the basics of teammate communication, let's jump right into the effective use of striker skills. When it comes to the effective use of striker skills, it's crucial to know when to deploy them. Be aware of the enemy's movements and pay attention to your skill cooldown timer. Always be conscious of when your striker skill is ready during a fight. I'll use this scenario as an example. At the game's start, a full squad landed with me, taking all available guns. And I was forced underground. After knocking the Nova, I knew the rest would come in chasing. And with my Hank cooldown ongoing, I know I need an advantage to face this squad, which is my skill. So I decided to delay, used a zip line to trick them, buying time for my striker skill. After knocking down the second guy, I anticipated the remaining two would be asking, who is this guy trying to wipe our whole squad? Having already taken down two, I knew they'd be frustrated and likely to chase me immediately. As I exited the underground using the zip line, I strategically placed my turret with a bit of space, not directly in front. This way, as they emerged from the zip line in anger, pushing carelessly. The somewhat hidden turret caught them off guard, Swiftly healing up, I positioned myself opposite the turret, diverting their focus onto me while the turret attacked them from behind. Clean squad wipe, guys, except for the fact that one of them had a self-revive. Next up, before we delve into the gameplay guide, is circle adaptation and evaluating risk and reward. I often watch a YouTuber named Waller FPS, finding his content interesting, entertaining, and educational. However, none of us are perfect. I'll be sharing a clip from one of his videos where he made a crucial mistake. In this scenario, I know he had just finished fighting two enemies in the building. When he knocked the Hank, he should have left the kill for the zone to finish the enemy, entered the zone and tried to heal up before potentially getting attacked by someone else. But no, he wanted to secure the elimination himself, forgetting his health was low and he needs to get in the zone, so he kind of deserves that. I won't explain much about circle adaptation in this video, but guys, try to always use the zone for your advantage. And I'm not saying camp at the edge, just use it to your advantage. All right guys, let's dive into the gameplay guide. I'll explain each move I make to help you enhance your awareness in Bloodstrike. One common mistake some of you make is rushing to finish a knocked opponent immediately. However, as you can see, after I knocked this guy, I took a moment to carefully scan the area before making a move towards the downed opponent. After eliminating the teammate and scanning the area, though initially seeing no one, I suddenly heard footsteps beside me. Without hesitation, I immediately set up the turret in a hidden position, preparing for a potential attack. After knocking the second guy, the turret still indicates that it's shooting at someone else. Being on high ground, I can't see the person. I'll come down, slide away from this hill, and scan to locate them. Sliding away provides a wider view, allowing me to examine the hill properly. Now that I've knocked down another guy, I need to find the second one because he might have crawled away to use his self-revive. But before I go, I can't leave this one alive. I must finish him before checking for the other one. I'll utilize the high ground to scan the area for a wider view, choosing a spot where he wouldn't expect me. If he's around, he might anticipate me coming through the road, but instead, I'll be standing on top of the hill. As you can see, I just wiped out that squad so easily, and I don't think they even dealt up to 50 damage to me. Next up, I moved to another location in Sakura Valley. This guy was unexplainably jumping, attempting to enter the window when there is literally a door on the other side. After I shot him, he ran into the building through the door for safety. While pushing him, someone else, possibly his teammate, tried to shoot me with the deadliest gun in the game, the Desert Eagle. Anticipating that he would try to meet me on the way, I broke his freaking ankles as he came out of the building. Confused, he was an easy target, and I got him knocked.
After knocking him down, I quickly scanned for his teammate that was shooting at me. Once I located him, I knocked him down immediately. However, after knocking him down, I noticed a parachute sign on my screen, indicating that someone was landing on me. At this point, I was in a state of panic because I knew that just two shots from his Desert Eagle could knock me. I tried my best not to shoot at him for long, constantly moving and sliding from left to right to avoid giving him a clear target. Finally, I got him knocked, only to hear two gunshots, one on my left and one on my right. I decided to finish my kills, thinking the people shooting wanted to steal them. I want you guys to notice something I did here. While finishing my kills, I didn't solely focus on that. I was also actively listening for footsteps or shots, knowing there were open windows on my left and right. I remained alert and didn't let my guard down easily. As soon as I received a hit marker and was shot at from the left, I crouched immediately taking cover. This allowed me to complete my kills and then shift my focus to whoever was trying to attack me. As I mentioned earlier, visual scanning is crucial. After checking the area and being confident no one was alive close to me, I decided to leave. While leaving, I noticed a sniper glare. It's essential not only to scan the immediate area, but also to look further ahead every time. Seeing the sniper glare indicated potential danger, but it also suggested the player might not be skilled, considering they were waiting with a sniper scope open. This led me to push aggressively. After knocking the sniper, I didn't just loot. I stayed alert, scanning for potential enemies. Despite clearing the previous area, I remained on my toes. Boom. I spotted a guy in the corner and started shooting. I didn't manage to kill him, but the key point is I remained alert. Continuing the match, I encountered an enemy. After knocking him, I saw his teammate trying to use Nova Gas as a smokescreen. I made him face the consequences. After that, I went forward to eliminate both of them. But while eliminating Nova, Nova's teammate Ran self-revived, and my eyes were scanning around. I noticed the Ran. Immediately I turned my aim to her, and while shooting, I saw someone else behind. Knowing I couldn't stand in the same spot after my shield was broken, I slid to the right, switched to my AK-47, and the quick slide threw off the enemy's aim, allowing me to knock all of them. Now let's watch it on a normal speed. After finishing Jet, I began getting shot at by someone else, so I ran and took cover. Scanning with my scope showed no one, but I knew I had to heal up before he pushed, which I did. Then I heard a smoke on the left, giving me the idea he's likely coming through the right. A straightforward kill. Anyway guys, enjoy the rest of the gameplay. It mostly revolves around sniping. As I always say, no one is perfect, and in this instance, I didn't observe circle awareness, leading to my demise. like